Hey, you're at Steve Tech. I'm Steve. This is what we're going to be talking about today is how a crankshaft is balanced. And so we're going to go through all the steps of how it's balanced, why it's balanced, and uh, what you're actually accomplishing here. And uh, just to give you an idea so you understand what's going on and what's all entailed into it. And uh, why sometimes it's going to cost a lot of money to balance crankshaft. And sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the cheaper version. Sometimes it goes real quick, a lot of times it doesn't. So, anyways, let's start over here with what you need to do. So, our first process is we are always trying, uh, we're gonna balance all of our individual components together. Now, uh, in the aftermarket world uh, with uh, connecting rods, uh, really good high quality pistons, high quality connecting rods, uh, these things they are extremely close together. I mean if they're if they're within a gram I don't even touch them. That's not even worthwhile to do. So What we're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the bob weight. So <clears throat> You cannot just throw a crankshaft in here in the machine and spin it without having some form of simulation of what the piston rod and everything weighs So let's go over and start talking about the bob weight so our bob weight consists of what is connected to the crankshaft, what is spinning around, you know, this is going around, and what's going up and down. That's going up and down. All right. So our anything that is rotating around is called rotating weight, and anything that's going up and down, i.e. the piston or the small end of the rod, is called the reciprocating weight. So first thing we're going to do is we go over here to our bob weight number. And uh, other machines might have other things to do. Uh, they, you can even have a piece of paper similar to this where we can, uh, you know, the piston weight, pin weight, rings, and all this stuff. So everything that is right up here on the screen. So we're gonna enter in all that stuff. And so what we wanna do first is we're going to do the connecting rod big end. So we got zero out our scale. Actually, let's do it this way. We're gonna zero out our scale. We use this fixture, which is allowing us to just weigh the big end of the connecting rod. The rod needs to be parallel. The small end of the connecting rod is suspended out here. Everything is on a little roller, so it will self, self excuse me, will self-center itself. All right, but nice and level, everything's right there. We can come in and we go, okay, our connecting rod weight is uh, 424.6. So we'll come up here, we'll go 424.6, enter. All right, now the next weight it wants to know, and we'll do this step by step so you're seeing exactly what it's asking us and exactly why we're doing this. So that's the main part of rotating weight. As you can see right here, this is all rotating weight. Anything that is connected directly to the crankshaft and goes in a circular direction, rotates. Next thing it wants to know is your bearing insert. Bearing inserts. Our inserts are 40.9, 40.9. All right, the next thing, so it gives you a grand total there. It wants to know how many throws or rods per throw. So obviously on the V8, we're gonna have two connecting rods per throw four cylinder, we'll talk about that in a second, obviously you only have one, and then uh, straight sixes, some of those other options would might have a different rod throw configuration. Now, we're just showing you how to do for uh, the typical V8, domestic V8. Uh, there are some crazy rod journal designs uh, that are out there, but we're not gonna be covering those right now, all right? So, it's asking you, it gives you how many throws per cylinder, so it's just times in those two. So your big end of the rod, the bearing, times two, because we've got two rod throws, or two uh, connecting rods on each throw, gives you a total. And then it even wants to ask you what the uh, oil weight is. Because yes, there's oil weight that is in there. So typically we're gonna be in between three and five. Most all the time we're just using five for that number. So that's actually the oil that is inside the connecting rod journal from the center of the crankshaft out to the connecting rod journal and oil that thin you know two thousandths two and a half thousandths three thousandths of oil film that is right there all right 
So that gives us our rotating weight. All right, now we're gonna start figuring out our reciprocating weight. So our reciprocating weight, first thing we're gonna look at is the connecting rod small end. So small end or pin end if you wanna call it that. Okay, so now we do the same thing where we're just going to zero out our scale. We flip this around. And now we're weighing the, get this level. There we go. Alright, make sure that everything is square in there so it's not giving us any bogus reading. And let's uh, zero this out. There we go. And we're at 177.5. 177.5. Enter. All right. Now it's going to be asking us for a piston weight. So I'll take this off. We're already zeroed up there. Now we have done the complete connecting rod. And when you do this correctly, you weigh the big end, you weigh the small end, you can do a total weight on the rod. The total weight is 602.3. And we can look on there, 424 and 177. We'll add this together on the old calculator. Uh, 177.5 plus 424.6 equals 602.1. 602.3, so I'm just off like a decimal place. That way we know that we have correctly weighed and had the, the rod balanced properly if you had the ang angle real wrong and you had it down like this it actually skews your balance and changes things so that's why we always want to have it nice and level and the the quick check is to see yep the thing weighs exactly what both halves weigh together all right now we weigh our piston just the piston 520.4 all right we're at 520.5 but we'll just change it Five two zero point four. Enter. All right. Now it wants to know what our uh, pin weighs. Piston pin is one eighty four point two. That's already entered in there. Now this particular piston has pin buttons. So if you're not familiar with pin buttons, we'll probably cover stuff like this later in one of the other videos. But that goes in there, and what it does is it simulates, uh, provides support for the oil ring. And actually, pin buttons are actually nicer. I kind of like them better than a support rail, but they do add a little bit of weight. Weight is not super critical in this, and I'll tell you about that in a second after we get our bob weight number. So that's 17.6 is what the pin buttons weigh, one on each side. So that holds the pin in from going anywhere. So the piston pin is in behind there. This supports the rail. It sits out there nice and flush, exactly like that. So this is what it's called, it's called a pin button. All right. Then we weigh our rings. 51 grams. Oh, these are, when we use the pin button, that means we don't use a spiral lock or don't use any kind of clip out here. So the two ways of doing it, a spiral lock, or a spiral lock with an oil support rail, or a pin button. Those are two methods of supporting that oil rail and holding the uh, piston pin from going back and forth. All right, so that gives us all of our reciprocating weight that equals uh, 950 grams. So our total reciprocating weight is uh, 1901. You get that number because that is times what? How many pistons and small end of the connecting rod are going up and down, right? So, ironically enough, it gives us our total reciprocating weight, which is uh, 1901. But even though there is two going on, they are opposed from each other. At one is going up as the other one's coming down. So as they are opposed from each other, you actually divide that number by two, which gives us our total reciprocating factor of 950.7. So our 950.7 plus our 936 gives us a grand total of 
1886 is our bob weight. So that's what's getting simulated there. Now if we changed our balance factor from 50% to 51%, which is an overbalance, or 49%, which is an underbalance. So if I change this number right here, now let's watch our number. Our bob weight is 1886. If we change this number to 49%, for underbalance, it changes our weight to 1867. If we change it to overbalance to 51%, it changes it to 1905. So see how much we're changing our bob weight. These, these engines will run at 49, 48%. They'll run at 51, 52% very easily and you'll never, you literally don't ever know it, point blank. Um, and there is a little bit of math and there is a little bit of things that like comp eliminator, uh, pro stock guys, Winston Cup guys will underbalance or overbalance because uh, in a underbalance situation, they tend to uh, ex vibrate less, hey, they tend to accelerate better. In an overbalance situation, they tend to h maintain high RPM better. So you're actually not balancing it, quote unquote, correct because this is the generally accepted SAE method 50% so uh, as racers we can change and manipulate those bob weights so we're actually making it way less and actually putting it out of balance by giving it over balance or under balance trying to achieve a better accelerating or a better better high rpm deal in general 50% is for everything that we do in big horsepower uh, big RPM, big horsepower stuff is great. Has no problem. Okay. So we have our bob weight number. Now we come in and we simulate and build that bob weight. So here's what the bob weight looks like without any weight on it. So we then say, all right, this thing needs to be um, half. Oops. So it gives us, our machine gives us half of a bob weight so we can do one half at a time or you can just do the whole thing at a time. So I prefer to just do it the whole thing at a time. All right, so these are just the little speed nuts. Make sure our gauge starts out at zero, scale is zeroed. So obviously we're gonna put the same weight on each side. So first off, we put that on there. That's 1424. That's 1683. 1770. Let's see, I think we'll do it this way. 1873 our bob weight number is supposed to be 1886 so we'll just do whatever it takes in order to make that weight and do it equally on both sides That's 83, now we'll be at 86. There you go, 1886.9. We're supposed to be 1886.7, so we're not gonna worry about that two tenths of a gram. All right, so we're at, like I said, we're at 1886.9. It's 1886.7, not gonna worry about that because, let me show you something here. 1886.9, here's this uh, post-it note, all right? That just changed it almost a gram, eight tenths of a gram. Okay, this is eight tenths of a gram. It's just a post-it note. Okay, so keep that in mind as we were doing this on what that weight is. I mean, that's a uh, almost a gram right there.